how we doing? Okay, welcome everybody to Gay Patriot Truths Exposed and Kathy with the K. I am delighted, thrilled, and I guess I could say over the moon <laughs> <laughs> to have Mr. Mark Sargent here. Uh, I want to let everybody know, Mark, before I bring you on and start talking that uh, um, I everybody in the audience get some flat earthers on your show get these people on your show you know and I have made attempts uh, to contact many many people in the past and I thought it was just never gonna happen and um, I saw mark I saw him on a TikTok video a couple of months ago and and I, I loved all the things that that you had to say and I said gosh then you made a you made a comment that you know email me and i will get in touch with you and then somehow i tried to save that video lost the video lost your name didn't know who to look for like i was like oh man that's and and just last week just last week i saw mark on uh, somebody duetted him on a on a TikTok video and i was like that's the guy and uh, I didn't want to lose the video. I took the email immediately. I immediately sent Mark an email. And Mark immediately responded. And I'm blown away with that. And I think it's so kind of you, uh, a gentleman that um, is very passionate. I've been looking at some of your stuff now before we, we talk today. And uh, I seem to be a heck of a nice guy. And... Um, and it's so intelligent, bright, um, down to flat earth uh, kind of guy. I, you know, the, I'm learning all these new little phrases. Instead of down to earth, we say down to flat earth or the the eagle flat, you know, because I'm, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. So it's the eagle flat earth and anchor um, now. And um, the, for the people that that are in this audience, we do have a lot of very knowledgeable people about that helped me before I listened to you um, that helped me to look into what how, how is this, you know, and look around and do a little investigating. And um, I have only been uh, a, a firm believer in the flat earth for about maybe three months now, three months. Thought it was possible. I surely, with all the other lies that we've been told and everything else that's going on, and um, especially over the past two years, um, I would like to take this time to pick your brain a little bit for a, for a, for a new gal and for any of the new folks or sure. folks that are skeptical, uh, skeptical about flat earth. So first thing I want to do is ask you, Mark, uh, I know that you always say that, that you've been uh, doing this for the past seven years. Yeah. Okay. Were you always a believer in flat earth? Before that seven years? No, 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 not at all. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, Could uh, you give us I, a little bit of your background then? The what? Your background. Could you give us some of your background? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, so, and give us a, um, get a little, a little biography you're growing up and lead to the point where Flat Earth was a reality for you. Right, right, right. I grew up on an island north of Seattle, uh, near the San Juans, uh, very, very sheltered, didn't believe in anything sinister. You know, my heydays were, you know, in the 80s. It was like, you know, no clue and no backup plan and nobody ever did anything wrong. Why would you? Uh, then in the, uh, the it, when JFK from Oliver Stone came out, that was my first introduction to conspiracies, period. And I saw it in the theater in a packed house. And I remember it was one of the few movies that I, everyone walked out of there angry. You know, it, it was like you could tell, you know, that th there was a real grit to it. And I, I still think it'll go down as probably as masterpiece. Um, and then the Internet started firing up a few years later and started going. And I never got married or had kids. So I had a lot of free time on my hand. And so my career, I mean, yeah, I started playing video games for a living. I mean, I was a sous chef before that. But then I started playing video games for a living. 
And then I got into time and attendance software and um, worked with a couple different uh, tech startup companies out in Boulder, Colorado. And during that time, as the internet got better and better and deeper and deeper, I started going down rabbit holes. Uh, the next big one, of course, would have been 9-11. And, but during that time, I went down just about every rabbit hole you could think of. I've got, I've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could, you could ever come up with uh, to the point where I was running out of conspiracies to look at. I was literally conspiracy bored. Uh, and the last one on the shelf, which I had never looked at, was Flat Earth. Because why would I? It's stupid. You know, people hate it. Why, why, would, why would you believe in something like this? It's silly, right? And I'm going, okay, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. I'm going to shut this thing down. I'm going to spend a weekend, knock it out. And, be, and like, and take, take that off my bucket list. I'll be fine by Monday. Nine months later, I'm banging my head on the keyboard because I cannot prove the globe now anymore. There's too many loose ends. And so I decide uh, in... Uh, February of 2015 to make a series of YouTube videos called Flat Earth Clues, which were basically a cry for help more than anything else, which was, okay, here's why I, you know, they're very small, but very, very basic, very easy to understand. Uh, and I got that from, I, I did proprietary software training for a number of years out in, out in Boulder. So I can boil down a lot of complex topics into bare bones, what the, you know, Johnny Lunch box will understand. So I put those out on the internet with, with one thing you're never ever supposed to do, all my contact information simultaneously, my phone number, my physical address, my real name, everything you could ever want to know about me because I want people to, to track me down. I want, it's like, look, I need help with this. I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Tell me where I went wrong. And immediately people started contacting me but not for the reason you might think. Uh, I mean, yeah, the media was curious because they're like, holy smokes, what is this? Um, but I was hoping the academics would co contact me and say, okay, here's where you went wrong. Here's the absolute proof that the, the magic bullet, that you know, the silver bullet that should knock out flat earth. No one ever called me for that. Instead, I got subject matter experts, people from the military, all branches, uh, you know, pilots uh, and people that fired uh, howitzers and tank commanders, you know, and, and master gunners and all those guys. And they all kept saying, yeah, it's not that nuts. Here's why. And they would give me all these, these little things to, you know, reinforce it. And by the time 2015 ended, we were well on our way. Any, any hopes that I had for the other shoe to drop that this thing was going to get shut down was gone. And next thing you know, we're doing, national conferences uh i have two flat earth books out on amazon uh, a netflix documentary which turned into an amazon documentary and what 1500 videos on my channel so yeah there's a lot in fact I'm, next week i am literally going to now that the whole mandates have been rolled back i'm going i'm uh, opening up the uh, the the big u.s conference in um south carolina greenville yeah greenville yeah, that's and that's what I'm in Charleston. I'm in Charleston, oh, nice. South Carolina. Nice. And um, and uh, one of our one of our big uh, let me just see, here he is. First of all, this is Tim. Tim um, is is one of the uh, is one of the main influences uh, oh. in my flat. He sent me he sent me uh, a link to uh, to get a. The flat Earth clock, but I can't read it. I, I, I got it. I don't know. Uh, this Indigo here, she's another one. Um, she she knows about the. They talk about the firmament. Sure. And um, and and how God created the firmament and the waters. And I'm like, I don't know about all this. And I started doing some research. And then we've got people on here like, like. Uh, I didn't know this. Let me let this cat out of here. This cat got in here. Dadgum, how did you get in here? Out you go. We okay. interrupt this broadcast. Yeah, there's no litter box in here. Oh, no. Okay. And then we still have people in the audience that that are they're not sure, like Mimi here. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Where is this? What did she say? I'm still not convinced in flat earth, but she has an open mind. I mean, sure. we have a lot of people here. Why, why would uh, you believe in, why would you believe in flat earth? I didn't. 
Nobody does. I have never found a lifelong flat earther. Everybody gets into this trying to debunk it. That's how it starts. Right. And during that process of debunking, you realize how weak the globe argument is. So, which is why our retention rate is so high. We have a 99% retention rate. Once, once you go down our rabbit hole, you're, you're down it. Because I don't convince right. you that the earth is flat. I don't persuade you. I just put the seed in your head. You tear it down yourself. So if you broke the globe, how are you going to fix it? You know, you, you can't go back to it. So the best, best you can hope for is like your enthusiasm wanes. It's like, oh, I'll just distract myself with other things. So I'm going to ask some questions for future viewers that aren't going to, that are going to be catching this after yeah. the live. Yeah. And I think one of the big questions is why, why did they lie? Why would they lie about the flat earth? What, what is your opinion on why we have been lied to, why they don't want us to know right. that the earth is flat? Right, right, right. Well, the biggest reason, and it's going to sound sound a kind of glib in a way, which is it was just bad timing more, more than anything, which is the technology needed to even figure out, you know, that we lived, you know, in something like this was not available to us until really fully until the late 1950s. And so when, if you don't figure this thing out, if you do not figure out what this world looks like, that we're living in some sort of building until 1960, well, that's a problem because civilization's already established. The concrete is already hardened. Everything is, the, the, the structures are pretty much laid out the way you want. And, you know, thousands of years have gone by. So why would you want to completely, up, you know, create upheaval in that? And so it was more about keeping the secret. So again, if you figured, I've asked journalists this. I've said, look, if you figure this thing out in 1960, would you break, in fact, would you even break this story to people now? It's 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 tough even now, but in 1960, it was really difficult to do because, you know, you only had three channels of television. You had radio and uh, some newspapers, not an easy way to, to, to get that narrative out to everybody. And how do you do it without destroying science in the process? You know, so, and I was born in, in 1953. And what did we just have the other day? We had Columbus Day, right? Yeah. And I remember and I remember learning how, uh, what is the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa, Santa Maria, Maria yeah. got all sent. Uh, he thought, they thought the earth was flat. Right. But they thought, they, this is what we were taught in school. Yeah. In first and second and third grade in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Right. And he, he hit, what is it, uh, uh, wherever he hit. Yeah. And, and and assumed that, that the earth had to be round because he figured he'd gone long enough it must be round and right. that was that was the model for it yeah there wasn't yeah. anything else it was just that and then of course when you know uh i remember when uh, alan shepherd sure i was in i was in second grade yeah i remember my teacher her name was miss brown and alan shepherd went up and came down yeah. And then, and then there was the orbiting yep. and there was the three orbits with John Glenn yep. and, and you're, and you're saying, and it's like, well, of course it had to be round. That's what, that's what we were shown. Why right. did they lie to us? Right. 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 And, um, and by the way, we don't even, our, our community doesn't even use the word round because technically your dinner plate is round. Your dining right, room right, table is right. round. We use, we use globe or, or, or ball or sphere. But right. to keep to keep the big reason why you want to keep the secret is because the people in power are always afraid of losing power. And even if there was a 5% chance that people would start running through the streets with pitchforks and torches, you know, Frankenstein style, which I doubt, uh, they're not going to take that chance. I mean, think of the, the bit. There's three aspects that would change immediately. Uh, first would be academics, which would be imagine every university in the world uh astrophysics and astronomy oh, it's gone it's gone for a long 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 time and then the remaining um physical sciences i don't know uh, geology hydrology biology archaeology anything with anology has to be retooled from the ground up no play on words and it, during that process libraries have to be emptied i mean emptied there's so many things you would have to rip out of that uh and i mean we're talking every university that is just academic chaos Economically, you would have to close world markets for 
months, which is actually probably not a bad thing. I mean, they're really just casinos anyway. And then last but not least of the five major religious houses of the world, right? Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity. You're giving them all leverage against science simultaneously. And you're telling them to show restraint, even though science has been beating them over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries. Yeah, it's a very short Illuminati meeting. Very short. <laughs> Where the guys, you know, the guy at the end of the table, because it's always one guy going, going, yeah, so we're going to keep a lid on this until we determine otherwise because really you you're you're worried about what might what the public might do i mean people would literally I mean, there would be people that would make pilgrimages into antarctica just on the rumor that you might see something that was built by god and that's really what we're talking about here uh if you want to get down to some of the brass tacks one of my um, one of my clues was called they are hiding god which was more or less insisted by the Christian community who came to me and said, look, you're dancing around the issue too much. Uh, you, you've got to address this. You know, is this a God issue? And it's like, yeah, it is. Because technically, come on, let's face it. If it's built, right? If it was built, if it was created, then it was created by someone. And then you're really kind of splitting hairs. You're talking about either uh, an advanced civilization that's older and more powerful than ourselves or the divine. And at that point, you're really kind of splitting hairs because one man's golden spaceship is another man's deity. So that's kind of, you know, that's that's the big reason why, you know, if you want to get to it right away, which is, you know, what people in power want to keep the power at all costs. And this this runs the risk of upsetting the balance. And you're saying, well, why? Why would it do that? Well, because if you admit that there is a structure around us, if we're in a building that was not built by us, right? It was built by someone way more powerful than the government immediately loses some credibility, loses some weight behind, you know, their punches. And they're not, why would you do that? Why would you, why would you ever do that voluntarily? So unless you had a reason, unless you could spin it in a certain direction, which is kind of what I think they're doing now. So there you go. Sorry. I ramble a little bit. No, that was fine. That was fine. Um, can you see the questions? Yeah, I can. Uh, Isn't it weird that not one astronaut will say they went to the moon with their hand on the Bible? Yeah, that was a um, Bart Sabrell thing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a doc, little documentary he did called uh, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, which was really interesting. He went around to different astronauts with a Bible. I talked about this, actually, in one of my clues, which was with a Bible and said, put your hand on the Bible court style and swear to me that you went to the moon. Not only would they not do it, they avoided putting their hand on the Bible like it was made out of plutonium or something. I mean, they really didn't want to swear, uh, you know, to, to it. And I, I always suspected that the Apollo astronauts were the last group that were told the why. You know, they were they were given all the, the, the big debrief, kind of like in, in Capricorn 1, which is, okay, you're going to fake it. Here's why. And it really pressed on them. I mean, a number of them turned to the bottle. They became recluses, really most of them wouldn't do interviews. And I, I get it. I mean, it's one thing, you know, deep down, there's a lot of good people out there and people don't, it's one thing to lie, but it's another thing to get accolades for the lie. I mean, these guys had schools named after them. I mean, they, how many different parades would you, can you sit in a convertible waving at people or something you didn't do? Eventually, yeah. you know, you, something you're, I you're can't not. I imagine that, that must feel pretty. Ugh. I mean, there's some people Pretty that you bad. can buy you can buy into your own press for to to a limit. But if you're running a full blown ticker tape parade down down New York City, what do you do with that? I mean, you're getting awards and and stuff for things that you did not even do, and they just didn't. So in, anyway, in future astronauts after them, they just treated them like they were, which were Air Force officers, and said, "Look, this is above your clearance." You know, no different than spies. You know, spies go out there and they say, okay, you're going to take this rifle, you're going to shoot that guy that's going to come out of that limousine at such and such a time. The spies do not know the intrigue behind it. Don't know what he did. Don't care. It's like, do your freaking job. So all the astronauts now, I mean, they're mostly um, uh, lieutenant colonels or higher that go up. Uh, you know, they know how to keep a secret. They, they, they're paid to do a job and they do it. And as long as they don't know, to, I'm sure they suspect. Sure. But as long as you don't know, I mean, you were in the military, you know, until you get the full, full debrief, there's, there's a little bit of denial that kicks in. It's like, well, it couldn't be that. 
So I'm probably okay. That way you can smile for the camera and, it, and you don't crack up. So there you go. So I'm hitting you with a lot of stuff quickly. So let me know if you ever want to. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. There's a lot. There's a lot. The, but but um, let me let me for, for the bird. let me do the basics for real quick for people. You are not living. Let's okay. let's back it up a bit. You are not living on a little rock covered in water, covered in air. This tiny film of air flying around an impossible vacuum universe at unbelievable speeds. You are living in a building, no different than the Truman Show, only much much bigger. And it wasn't built by us. And we figured it out in 1960 in the the United States and the Soviet Union, and they decided to keep it a secret for understandable reasons. One of the reasons, one of the ways I qualify a conspiracy is if I can't improve on it. That sounds a little egotistical, but I'm a pretty clever problem solver. And that is, if I can come up with a better way to hide what they're doing, then they made all the moves I would make to keep this thing a secret. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's absolutely what they're doing. And they, you know, they've done a, a great job. They've kept it a secret for 60 something years. So good for them. But who? But 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 God, who built it, kept it a secret for five thousand years. So a little bit better. And and when whenever I go to watch people trying to explain, I'll tell you when I was a little girl, it, it bothered me. It bothered me, and I'm like, I don't understand. It doesn't seem to make sense to me that I'm spinning so fast because it doesn't look like I'm spinning fast. And how come the trees aren't blowing? And how come, how is this, how, here's another one. Even with the pictures, the pictures, the right. photos right. of the earth that they, the globe that they show you, um, it's not spinning. No, no, it's no, not, it's not. It's and not it, spinning. The no, globe that they show you from space, it's not spinning. No. So where do they come off with this spinning so fast and then spinning and then going how many millions of miles an hour forever? Right. It just, I, I couldn't comprehend it. And so what I, I thought I'm just a stupid, ignorant little girl yeah. and I, I'm not a scientist and I'm just too dumb to comprehend that. Is what I thought. Right, right, right. And you're not, you are not far from alone in that capacity. There was a, a video I did called The Code of Credibility, which is anyone in a lab coat immediately gets more intellectual credibility just by putting on the coat. And that is no different than a firefighter and a policeman and a soldier. There's certain stereotypes and, and profiling that we do when we see these uniforms. And when someone puts on a lab coat, you mean, oh, they're obviously pretty smart. Wonder where they got their master's from. Wonder where they got their PhD from. And whatever they say, if it is backed by mainstream media, is might as well be the gospel. Which is why, by the way, Bill Nye, the science guy, gets on television. I have talked to producers and I say, why do you keep putting him on television? He has a bachelor's in mechanical and he's an actor. That's all he is. And they go, he looks the part. He looks like a scientist. And because Disney gave him a syndicated show for five years and it's syndicated, so it runs forever, people grow up with it. It's like, oh, yeah, there's that scientist guy. Hey, whatever he says must because, again, I'm not very smart. You know, I've, I've got to whatever they say must be true. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the most famous scientist in the world, which is hilarious considering he's a media scientist, said one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard, which is science is true whether or not you believe in it. Meaning when we put our stamp on it, that's what it is. And I was like, wow, this is it's just mind blowing. But it's true. And they get away with it along those lines. And they never apologize. When science gets something wrong, absolutely dead wrong, they never come back and say, oh, we're sorry about yelling at all people and you know making fun of, of different individuals. No, no, we're just going to change the definition. And now it's the new umbrella of, of science. It's like, wow, you guys, seriously. Anyway. So, oh, yeah. By the way, um, if the earth was spinning, a bullet wouldn't hit the target. I have talked to so many military people. In fact, on my channel, I've got a playlist called the um, Flat Earth Testimony Shows by Subject Matter Experts. And everybody in the military that fires something, I don't care if it's a missile, if it's a, if it's a 
cannon, if it is a tank, or even rifles, which is just cracks me up when CNN runs a sniper. It's like, oh, I don't count for the curvature of the earth, really, at one mile, because these guys are shooting 30, and they're never doing it. Every military person I've ever talked to, personally, says every firing solution never takes into account two things. One is the uh, curvature of the earth and the other is the spin of the earth. Because if you had to forget about even the curvature, right? If you had to take into account the spin of the earth, you know, without, you would have to, especially when, when you're shooting long distance, you would have to have to know your chart. Not only do you have to know where you are on that map, but you have to know what the spin is. Because remember, the spin is supposedly a thousand miles at the equator, but it's zero at the North Pole. So it's a gradient. So you'd have to be like, okay, well, we're at 600 miles an hour here. So we have to adjust this. And they go, we, everyone says the same thing. We've heard of it. We never used it. In fact, they say it might even be in the book. We never plug it in ever. So. Because it would be inaccurate. Yes, it would be. Yes, it would absolutely be inaccurate. It doesn't, it doesn't make any damn sense. And why would everybody say the same thing? It'd be one thing if, if the howitzer guys would say, oh, yeah, we use the curvature, but the tank guys don't. Or the, the Sparrow missile system guy that I talked to. It's like, oh, yeah, we're firing at classified distances, you know, out downrange. But it's like, no, no, it never comes into play. Submarine guys say the same thing. No, no different underwater. Oh, yeah, torpedoes never do they take that crap into account. And, they, and torpedoes go a lot farther than people understand. They go a long, long, long way. The new ones, anyway, not the old World War II types. So. Right. And and the gravity thing. Gravity. Gravity. Now, I'm a little different than some flat earthers because some flat earthers, will, a lot of flat earthers will say, well, gravity just is, doesn't exist at all. But I kind of turn it in a different direction. Every scientist will tell you they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what gravity does, the side effects of gravity. If you, you know, drop something, you know, there it goes. It falls, it falls down. They'll say because it's a magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a globe. I say, well, it's just some magical molecular force that pulls things straight down. Either way, but the other thing that comes into play is density, which is, you know, things are more dense there. So if you take a, a, a beach ball and you hold it underwater, it pops back up. Was it gravity did that? No, it was because the beach ball was much less dense than the water that was in. Take a helium balloon, let it go. It's going to go up. Is that because of gravity? No, it's because the helium is much less dense than the atmosphere around it. So between the two, no, gravity, you know, until science can actually simulate, good luck with that, uh, trying to simulate anti-gravity, you know, an actual chamber where you can manipulate gravity, the electromagnetic field, not going to happen. Not, not, not going to happen. So no, gravity is only a theory. That's all it is. Now it's a very persistent theory, and it works because they say it works. But that's that's it. You know, they, it's it's still something. That, again, they cannot replicate. They can only tell you what it does. Can't tell you what it is. I'd like to know what it is because it's it baffles me, and um, uh, especially when I mean when you fall when you fall a foot as opposed to four feet. And now that I'm getting older, when I fall, I hurt myself. Right. <laughs> and, and, and so really I'm always, but I think, you know, like why, why is it so much more dramatic at a, t at a higher distance? Right. You know, why, why is it, why is the impact more severe? And, and here's another thing. Yeah. Uh, um, falling, falling off of a bridge into a body of water, you can hurt yourself just as if you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hit cement. Yeah. So. But but that's that's mostly a and that is mostly a density issue, which you know speed versus density. You're absolutely right. When your your when your fall speed increases, I think free fall without a vacuum it's 100 you have to look at us 150 170 miles an hour something like that when you get up that much speed and you it doesn't matter what you're hitting i mean unless it's elastic you know you can you, there are there are certain you know unless it has a, a bunch of give to it you know like uh like the old like the hollywood stunt mats you know something like a like a big balloon that sinks really really quickly water only gets get you so far which is why i'm just 
I, I am always amazed at the cliff divers in Mexico. You know, they can still pull it off, but their entry point is very, very small. You belly flop from a cliff diver height. Oh, you're going to break ribs. It's going to be awful, yeah. awful, awful, awful. In fact, they tell you not to get on a whole side thing that um, if you're falling enough, again, I'll have to look it up over a certain number of feet. Um, not only do you have to point your toes, they probably told, told you this in the military, point your toes, clench your butt cheeks, uh, plug your nose, make sure you are as tight as possible. No loose arms. And you're still probably going to break something. But uh, yeah, yeah, people... People think that that uh, falling, which is why we in video games, it's always that running joke. You can fall from any height into the water in video games. You're fine. Not in real life. Not in real life. No, nope. that's just that's like when we used to watch cartoons, oh, yeah. you know, uh, and people, you know, the, whoever the characters were got blown up, but they'd always be just fine. Yeah, people, um, people the um, further you go up, the more electricity measurable. Sure. Sure. The, the electromagnetic universe, absolutely, no no question. It, is there an electromagnetic field and set of equations involved in this world? Yeah. Uh, can we replicate them? Not that I know of. Uh, can other civil, older civilizations, do? does UFO, let's go into UFOs real quick. That's what I wanted to hit next. Boy, you're right on, on, on okay. mark with me there, Mark. Uh, yeah, UFO, I mean, what about UFOs? What, 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 what are they? Where do they come from if they're... If we're inside this big dome, yeah, where are th and you can't and you can't go out of the dome, right, right, right. Where it's are cool. these things coming from? Okay, first let's say what they're not. They're not from Jupiter and Venus and Mars, like we've done in sci-fi journals forever, right? It's it's a nice romantic thing. It's like oh, Martians and Venusians and Jupiter, Jupitertonians, whatever they are, doesn't really matter. Pleiadians. The what? Oh, okay. The um, they're not they're they're not from there. They're mu probably much closer. Could they be interdimensional? Yeah, I suppose. But I like to think of them as just older versions of us. Don't forget that we are not the first people to uh, to rent this apartment by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there are older, you know, you don't even have to watch Ancient Aliens to believe it, right? You know, the but there are sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India. The real pyramids, the Bosnian pyramids, uh, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, goes on and on and on. There are old, ver you know, older civilizations, remnants of them all over the place. Did some of them have access to technology that we don't have? Sure, seems like it. Uh, and all you'd really need is a unified field engine, something that they were bugging Einstein about all the way to his death, which was a unified field engine, otherwise known as the UFO engine, means you can control the equation between electromagnetic waves and you, what you're generating and gravitational waves, whatever you want to call that that's around here. And if you can balance that equation perfectly, you can fly at almost unbelievable speeds with no G-forces at, at all. So the what I'm getting in there is, are there old, you know, other civilizations? Are there things flying around the sky? Yeah, you bet. Uh, you want to have some fun with it, go buy, spend some money and get some night vision binoculars and, you know, go out there, binoculars, not monoculars, you know, something with five power or higher and just start looking at the sky at night. It is crawling with stuff. The question that comes back to what you is, is well, that's, well, they're not us. <laughs> the, the American government, the American military would love Where to take credit for it. Can I, let me ask you a question yeah. because some people say, and I've heard some people say, when you say the word extraterrestrial, first of all, you break down Terra, which is Earth or right. dirt. And some some people believe that the extra dirt terrestrials, right. the extra dirt beyond Antarctica, that the that 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 there are people now living there. Extraterrestrials oh, yeah. living on the flat Earth that we don't know about. What sure, your take on that? Uh, absolutely. Why? Why wouldn't there be? You know, why would the? Why would this place be a one-off? You know, if if we're in a building, people often say, "Well, you know, what's outside of our building?" It's like, well, first, it's not space. But the other one is why? If you know, if you only have, you know, you're not going to just have one of these. Why wouldn't you have a whole bunch around around each other? The bigger question there is. 
are the extra, you know, when I call them ETs, that's fine. But are the spaceships that are <laughs> spaceships, are the ships flying around, old habits, the, um, that are flying around, are they trapped in here with us or can they move freely from place to place? I don't know. I kind of lean that they're trapped in here with us for the same reason why we're stuck in here, you know, that we're, we're not allowed to, to go out freely because this place is either a building, you know, it, we're either a box of kittens that are being protected from something outside or a box of scorpions that should never, ever be let out. And just, you know, full well that we probably are more the, the latter, you know, we're probably the box of scorpions. We, we, we had movies going all the way back to the original day. The earth stood still. And that was the premise. It's like, oh yeah, you guys don't get to do space travel. You'll just wreck everything. And it's like, yeah, probably. Uh, I totally got that. So there, you know, are there ships flying around? Yes. Do I think they're in here with us? Yes. Are they subterranean? Yeah, maybe. Sure. Why, why, why not? It wouldn't take much to put them, you know, it kind of goes into the hollow earth thing, but don't forget that most of our civilization lives between sea level and one mile up. That's it. You know, altitude sickness kicks in at about 7,000 feet. So even if you had a subterranean place that was 10 miles high, which is nothing. You know, you could you could put a whole civilization in there. Very, very easy. Our, our commercial jets cap out at 10 miles high. Our spy planes cap out eh, unclassified, say, at 20 miles, give or take. So you wouldn't need much. Much, much, much. And yeah, yeah, what, what Indigo's saying there. Yeah, there's, there's continents. Could you put a whole bunch of continents outside? Sure. You know, loosely, sure. Or a secondary dome around that? Yeah. But no, we're we are not alone, and there are you know, the land masses that we know about. There's a high degree of probability that there are way, way more land masses out there besides ours. How, you know, they've I guess they've measured the globe. You know, yeah. they've yeah, yeah, yeah. measured how right. many miles it is around the globe. Sure. How many? How big do you think the flat Earth? really is ours our, our yeah. part of it uh, yeah. our well, part no, of it i mean well our part of it but not, not just the not just the the united nations thing but beyond oh, oh 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 well the the you know the white and how the, deep and how deep is it i mean i know there's tunnels and underground things and networks and cities and i you know i'm the the white part of of this map, you know, this is more or less the flat earth map. The white part of this, which is Antarctica is, is been reduced down just because we don't want to make models with really, really thick, you know, wide edges. The Antarctica part is probably thousands. I mean, could be 5,000, could be 8,000, could be 10,000 miles wide, you know, out there, which is why it took the American military so long to find the outer markers. Remember, they were flying around from 1928 all the way up until the late 50s, 30 years flying and flying with better and better planes. And then finally, they find whatever whatever's out there. As far as the depth of it, well, I throw that back at science. Like, tell me, science, how deep it is. You say it's 4,000 miles down to the center of the earth. What's well, the deepest hole ever drilled? Is it half that? Is it 2,000 miles? Is it 1,000? Is it 100? Is it 10? You've only drilled down eight miles. The Russians and the Germans tried for years to get past the eight-mile marker or 12 kilometers. Couldn't do it. Absolutely couldn't do it. Something was stopping them. And, you know, it wasn't just molten, in, in my opinion. I think there's a, there's a certain part that you cannot go down past. And so how thick is this place? I don't know. We can't go past eight miles, uh, you know. Is or could there be chambers that are sealed off that are deeper than that? Yeah, maybe, but you're never going to know about them. Some people believe that that uh, that hell is actually down within. there. It's within. It, yeah, I mean, you. Could, I mean, there's I different. Know. There's different models. You know, it's it's interesting you'd bring that up because when you look up, when you go into Google and type in ancient cosmologies everybody drew the same thing for the most part they all drew this <laughs> which is what you would observe you know the the stars you know curve over the sky and so everyone drew it. it's like oh yeah we're in a in a in a flat sign of sort of snow globby thing but there were other models i believe the hebrew models were kind of getting into that below it that you know that that's where hell might exist yeah maybe 
maybe i'm not again i can't shoot it down it's very very possible i mean the 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 stories had to come from somewhere right and um and 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 then what's outside what's outside the dome or the firmament <sighs> Um, there's, 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 a, a couple... there's a gentleman called uh, uh, that I that I really liked um, hanging on his words, and he talks he ties the whole flat Earth thing in with firmaments and more more realms and more realms and more realms, and it's like I'm just getting I'm just ingesting this whole flat. Yeah, earth. yeah, yeah. I I, I, I try on out there. I try to stick with one world at a time if I can, just because. <laughs> There are, you know, it, it can get a little overwhelming. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Do do I think that uh, there are more domes outside of this place? Sure. Do I think that that's where we go when we die? No. I think it's more of a heaven type scenario because where we are here is 99% conflict. Meaning, it, it, and it's amazing how many people don't pick up on that because they're too busy, you know, wallowing in the conflict. Doesn't matter how beautiful, how talented, how powerful, how rich you are. There's always something to complain about. Lots and lots of things. Contentment is almost impossible to find here on a regular basis. We, we get it in small doses. So outside of this world, I believe in dualism. You know, uh, can't be light without shadow, hot without cold, plain, pain without pleasure. You can't experience, you can't fully embrace something without seeing the opposite. You know, you don't necessarily have to live it, but you got to know, you got to be aware of it. And so this world, if this world's 99% conflict, then what's outside of it, when you die anyway, is probably 99.9% .9 unlimited. Meaning, you know, you, you have a lot, you know, you have, it, it's called what you want, Shambhala, Nirvana, but you have way, way more freedom. And I believe it's cyclical. I think you, you go back and forth. We are, this, this place is more of a school, a classroom. Than anything else uh it can only be one of three things if it's entertainment well that doesn't make sense there's a lot of people that aren't having fun uh if it's a prison well it's a pretty nice prison in a lot of areas i mean come on the only thing that's screwing this place up is people and uh this place runs just fine without people by the way and last but not least would be a classroom which is kind of a blend of both but you get some perspective so that's what it feels like to me so um I'm, I'm going to open this up for questions from, for you guys right now. Uh, think about questions if you have any for Mark or, or, or any uh, subjects that are you know, part of this flat earth thing that you'd like him to, to expound upon. Um, and do you have any places besides, of course, your YouTube channel, which is just simply Mark Sargent? Yeah. Uh, and I found it with ease and, um, and there's a, there's a, but do, do you have any places of reference, uh, you know, rabbit holes that people can go down and, and I, I haven't seen anybody here that's arguing <laughs> that the earth is well, flat, but, the, but they're not, but they're not all convinced yet. Sure. Uh, not, not of them are, are still convinced. And, um, and then some people actually say it really, why does it matter if it's flat? It, let me, let me answer that one first. It doesn't matter until you start believing it. The only people that say that are people that aren't buying into it yet. It's kind of like telling someone after they, after they're 30 years old or so that they're adopted right? Mm. It's pretty big, but it means nothing until you start believing it. You'd be like, no, I'm not adopted. Get out of here. And then the people keep coming. It's like, look, I got papers. I got files. It's like pretty sure you're adopted. The second you start believing it, it just ripples back in time. And all of a sudden you start revisiting all your childhood memories. And it's like, wait a minute, who were those other people that kept coming to the house? You know, and all, all this stuff, which is because flat earth is a big, big, what? not even flat earth, just enclosed world, right? You know, the fact that you're living in a Truman show, it's so big that it's the only thing, it's important enough that we debunk it to children. Meaning you, when you're, when you're in first grade, we don't talk about anything or JFK or 9-11 or any tragedy or anything like that. We don't talk about any of that stuff. However, Right off the bat, we say, oh, yeah, by the way, you used to think the earth was flat. Now it's a globe. Here's the globe. Spin, spin, spin. Put it in the corner. It's there with you for 12 years. It is. So, 
I watched a video with, I'm sure you know, Flat Earth Dave. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Dave, Dave and I, I are mean, friends. I, I've watched Flat Earth Dave. I couldn't yeah. get through to Flat Earth Dave. I would love to talk to him. Busy guy. I, I, I'll I'm make sure, a recommendation. Sure. I'll make a recommendation for you. That would be awesome. Thank yeah, happy you. to. But but I saw and I love, I absolutely, I watched it a couple of times and it makes me cry when I watch it. And he went to a nursing home. Right. And talked with the elder, was it, I believe her name, was her name Annie? I, I, I can't know. remember her name, but she was 100 years old. And she was precious. Yeah. And she talked about how when she was in school, she was taught that the earth was flat. Uh, and then, yeah, it, and then it changed. Yeah, and, it, it, very interesting that she would say that because you know that goes back to well, that would be like she would be like my great grandmother. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we were always told that it became a globe roughly about five hundred years ago with Copernicus, but that wasn't the case. It took a long time before you know education systems got standardized. And yeah, then then we started pushing it. So yeah, very interesting that uh, that Dave would find her, and uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, I'm, I think he was just there visiting with his with his mom or or a relative. But yeah. it was it was it was absolutely great. Yeah. And um, in the Book of Enoch, read the Book of the Courses of the Heavenly Luminaries. It explains it beautifully. <laughs> It does, and there's also something ah, something about Enoch, uh, which is, of course, a non-canonized book of the Bible, which is, you know, about a guy who spent a lot of time, years, up in heaven, you know, getting the mechanics. But in fact, you read the book of Enoch, it, I know it comes off as there's a reason why it's not canonized. Uh, it kind of comes off as Chinese stereo instructions in some way, because it's a technical manual. He breaks down how heaven works. <laughs> it, he does. Tiny stereo. Gotcha. I mean, he, he says, okay, here's here's where the you know, the snow and the rain is kept. Here's where the sun and the moon are kept. And, and of course, we're saying, oh, well, you know, that's metaphorical. It's like, no, I think he's pretty much saying that it's a big mechanical this system. And then when he came back down for a while, but came back, back down in the world, eventually he left. And he had a big, big following, right? And... When he left, he supposedly walked off the earth, meaning he walked in a certain direction and got to, and in fact, you'll, it was, I think is the end of the third chapter of Jasher, if I'm not mistaken, which is he went to an area of ice and snow and more ice and more snow. They were very redundant in this part, which is very unusual for, you know, because most of these stories come out of the Middle East, right? Not a lot of ice and snow when it comes to camels and dates and, and you know, oasis type right. places. And he told he told his followers, you know, a bunch of people went with him. It's like, we'll go with you, you know, get the tour bus. We'll go down with you. And and he says, you're not going to make it. He goes, you will not be able to go where I go. And eventually they all turned back, the ones that didn't die. And he walked off into the snow and apparently was was taken away. The question is, was that a land bridge? You know, where where was the land bridge that went, you know, probably down the south part of Africa, you know, that connected to the outer rim? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the whole Enoch thing. I thought that was very, very cool. So Deborah's Deborah says here actually what she did in the fifties was change out the maps and replace them with a globe. I, I, yeah. I didn't do you, that. You know the, the the map that throws me. Everybody knows the same map because the cliche student you know teacher goes to the blackboard and he pulls it down in front of the blackboard and you see all the continents laid out, which is known as the Mercator map, which is about five hundred years old. And even that map is dead wrong when it comes to the, you know, how the, um, the, the continents are laid out and the size of everything and where everything is, it's wrong. Um, even if you believed in, you know, in, in the globe, the Gall Peters map way before the flat earth thing, there was a, something called the Gall Peters map, which shows the, the more accurate representation. They did it for, you know, merchant, you know, reasons. And of course, to, you know, show some supremacy of the, the, the North uh, versus South equator. But here's the thing. They know that map is wrong. They've known it for years and years and years. They won't change it because of familiarity. It's the standardized map. We're going to use it. It make, you know, people are fine. We don't want to start changing maps. It's as we'll be introducing new math, you know, new, new math. And so uh, if you want to have fun, look at the Mercator map 
and then spin it upside down. Here's the part that gets me, which is all the pointy bits on the Mercator map, they all point down. They all point south, meaning, you know, the, the southern part, you know, all, all any any peninsula, anything that, that's the that's, uh, peninsula size, everything points south. Well, that doesn't make any sense in a globe. You statistically speaking, it would it would not it would not work like that. However, if you put it on the AE map, you know, which is always known as the flat map, all the pointy bits point out. Makes way way more sense. Way way yeah. yeah. They all point out. So which again, which randomly out, of course. So. <sighs> Where do you want to go? I, I just there's just so many different places, um, and there's so and there's so there's so many. Um, what what do you believe is on the other side of this of the firmament? Yeah, if like you like, could survive like the it. Side of uh, Truman Show's wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could survive the trip, if you could get past it, which I don't know if you can, because they tried to punch through it. The United States and the Soviet Union tried to punch through it for four years straight, from uh, fifty-eight to sixty-two. Uh, which was why is that never talked about? Because I've uh, never heard of that. Experience. It's well because technically it was only called uh, high-altitude nuclear tests, meaning uh, the the atomic testing that was done in the late fifties into the early sixties was all aerial, all of it. And it was, this was before, you know, the, the whole, well, I shouldn't say it was before, but Bikini Atoll was a, was a part and the deserts were a part, but it was all aerial for four years. The United States Soviet Union, why would both sides just be firing up, 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 up? I knew why. And that was, you want to know that, again, that's, that's a guy thing, right? Which is, you find a wall, you, know, you can't get through it. It's like, get the cannon, yeah, roll in the cannon, right? It's like, well, we got bigger than that. It's like, it's like, hit it with a megaton. Just hit it with a megaton. Do it. And so you hit it, and the first shots, the first couple shots were low megaton. And this was back when megaton was a pricey option. You know, you just couldn't pick one up at a 7-Eleven, right? This was expensive stuff. So the first low megaton yields, you know, three and five megatons, something like that. If you can't get through it with that, well, then what are your options? Well, you're just going to paint the sky. Basically, they were using nukes as paintballs to map out the arc of the sky. You know, just hitting it, it's like, okay, that's that, you know, trying to get a good feel for the shape of this thing. Because what else did you have back then? You need to know what sort of arc, and this is even this is even exaggerated. It's probably even much, much shallower than this, but we had to put in lights. So if 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 the if this dome is way, way shallower, you know, snow globe is really, really high arcing, you need yeah. to know that before you try to fake a space program, which we should probably get into, before you fake a space program because you don't want anything crashing into it. You need to know when to roll those rockets over and go horizontal and start dumping them into the ocean. And that's what they did for four years. They both stopped simultaneously and, you know, in, in 1962 and, and said, oh, okay, we're done with the aerial testing now. And that was the, like, oh, okay. That, that since I, I actually believe this now, that when I look at the sky, and um and i see a rainbow yeah it's like it makes sense now that it's a that it's a rainbow have you you're absolutely right in fact have you ever googled rainbow from a helicopter no oh, your your mind's gonna snap <laughs> so if you google rainbow, google from, a rainbow from a helicopter from a helicopter rainbow rain from a helicopter it's three-dimensional it's a dome oh my so when, when they fly over it, you, you think, oh, this rainbow is just, you know, it's like Lucky Charms, right? You know, it's just this big, you know, rainbowy yeah, color it's, thing. It's but it's from here to there. But this absolutely has to go incredible amounts of miles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but to look at it now, it's like, I'm like, eh. you know, oh, it, yeah. it, it makes me feel a lot. I, don't, I feel more empowered. Yeah. And, and that makes sense to you. And I am glad you were one of the few people that have actually said that on air. You're absolutely right. This place, once you figure out where you are, once you figure out that this place was built, you know, you're in a structure that was built for you, then the whole loneliness of space, 
you know, that 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 we're residue from the Big Bang, that we could be but there snuffed. is no space. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. You know yeah, what there always no used space. to get me, Mark? When hmm. I was little Twilight Zone, uh, I watched it in prime time. I watched the episodes when they were premiering. Sure. But what always used to get me was the when it first came on, it was just it was like stars in space. Right. And you just kept going and going and going and going and going and it's not like that no no in fact even carl sagan right who would not be our friend if he was still alive would be would be even he said it's like space it seems like an awful waste you know because there's nothing in most of it if you you know, believe mainstream science most of it is absolutely nothing there's nothing yeah, there. If you, nothing. If you, yeah. And I mean, no, I mean, and don't forget, we're not talking about nothing like, uh, you know, there's nothing outside in the yard. We're saying that, you know, because what we're breathing in here is, is you know, not nothing. It's 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. It's nothing nothing. <laughs> means nothing, not even air. Nothing. And, right. like a and so we basically the flat earth model and the reason why we resonate as well as we do and I was a little worried in the beginning because I was because I thought people might freak out. Is we turned the universe from this vast, huge, huge, monstrous area into a studio apartment? You know, just cranked it all down, and people and I'm like, oh yeah, are people going to get claustrophobic? What, what's going to happen? And immediately, no, people adjusted fairly quickly. In fact, the only questions I got right off the bat were, "Does this kill astrology?" And I go, "No." Not technically astrology, not astronomy, where I go, you know, the stars in the sky, if you want to glean meaning off of different zodiac things, well, then, it was, then it's just closer. It's much more intimate. I mean, they're definitely out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're no different. There, but no, what are they? They're not what people think that they are. No, they're just, they're just lights in the sky. No different. And I, I won't use too much biblical stuff unless you want me to. Which is um, you can use whatever you want, Mark. The um the the well okay in the Bible the sun was you know to to light the day and the 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 moon was to you know light the night, right. and but they were also for you know, wonders and inspiration and and basically the the sky is a giant, very ornamented clock that predates language. In fact, you don't even okay. need language to to pull that off. Talking up. about the sun and the moon now too. Yeah. Is the sun a globe? Is the moon doesn't have a to globe? be. Doesn't even have to be. It could be. It could be two dimensional, like a uh, like a spotlight above you. Uh, and by the way, well, let's, let's get into that a little bit. So in this, right, you see those two little arms that are sticking out there. One's the sun, right. and one's the moon. Of course, we had to just put the arms on there. I have no right, idea. right. Held up. But the sun and the moon are tiny, tiny, tiny by comparison. Meaning the 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 sun and the moon are roughly the same size, you know, maybe fifty miles wide, give or take. Altitude, yeah, tough to say. Could be three thousand miles high, could be three hundred miles wide. We don't know, but there's no relationship between the two of them when it comes to uh, reflection. So the moon, you know, is like lit up because it reflects the sun. Really, says who? Because when you you can test moonlight, let's go off on a whole different track. Ready? Uh, you can test moonlight with, uh, I don't know if you've ever used a uh, point and click infrared thermometer. You can buy down at the hardware store for like 20 bucks. These things you use them to like test temperatures on engines and concrete and crap. I know well, what you're going to say. The, somebody calls me up and says, hey, by the way, the moon is cold. And I go, yeah, I go, I, saw that. I go, come on. I go, what does that mean? I, I remember I was into flat earth like a year when someone told me that I'm going, get out of here. And then I go, is it cold at night? I go, well, that's what you mean? And they go, no, man, it's generating a cold light. I'm going, what do you mean by that? And they say, well, not you know, it's not. but a cold light. Well, yeah. So if it's 90 degrees in the sun, then it's 80 degrees in the shade, give or take. But if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees or warmer in the moon shade. It's warmer in the, in the shade. And not only that, if you take ma a magnifying glass to moonlight, it'll get even colder. And it's like, wow, is that? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've done like, tests. Because we've done... if you take the magnifying glass with the sunlight, it gets hotter. Yeah, but in moonlight, and it gets colder. burn holes in paper and leaves yep. and things. Yep. yep, but the moon, so the sun is basically an incandescent bulb, and the moon is a cold LED, for, for lack of better terms. 
And it just, and it, does that prove a flat earth? No, it doesn't, but it destroys the, the relationship between the two. And it makes more sense. You know, the other, the other coincidences, I mean, I think parts of this world were built deliberately with breadcrumbs, you know, kind of baked in. Uh, one of which is the, um, the, you know, the eclipse. Like when the moon goes in front of the sun, it fits perfectly, right? It's right. like, well, how is that possible? Because the moon is, is 2,000 2, miles wide. And it's like, well, because the moon is 400 times, is it 40? No, 400 times. 400 times smaller and 400 times closer than the sun it fits absolutely it was 440 damn it i'm gonna look that up i don't want i want to you guys know what i'm saying though it's it's set perfectly so wow that's a coincidence you want to know the other coincidence with the moon it's perfectly tidally locked to the earth meaning you see only exactly one side of the moon Meaning it's like, yeah. oh, you'll get shadows, waxing and waning crescents. But the patterns on the moon are the patterns on the moon. You will never see anything else. And it doesn't change even a quarter degree in a hundred years. Wow. What's up that's, with that? That's pretty amazing. How, how does that work exactly? Um, and so it's like the dark side of the moon, we never see it. And it's like, we have to take NASA's word for it. It's like, oh, here's what the dark side of the moon looks like. Really? Because it doesn't look anything like the other side of the moon. How does that work? Or I don't know, the moon craters. The moon craters are set in a way, and you'll know this, you know, from, from military things, everything is hitting at a perfect 90 degree angle. The craters are all, are all circular, you know, like they were decorated that way. It's like, how does that even happen? You should get, you know, you know, divots and, and near misses and stuff like that. The moon should be a mess. It should be a shooting gallery, but instead it looks like it was decorated. And that's, that's, you know, just the, the sun and the moon from the physical side. Anyway, the point is the sun and the moon very, very small, very, very close. And that's how, by the way, you know, somebody might ask you about the burn out. The what? Um, I don't think they're going to, you know, because the theories in the, at some point, the sun is going to burn out. You know, I've heard things like, that. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but um, I've been trying to get to this, this question here for you, um, yeah. but, but we've been really, really, you've been going on yeah. with uh, explanations and, very interesting, but where in do you think our future lies with this knowledge? I believe I believe that eventually, like with every other civilization before ours, I believe that once a once a civilization learns where they are truly, then the jigs up meaning then it's the big reveal so because again once you figure out where it is well then we're not acting naturally anymore are we getting closer to the big reveal i because closer now it's... than we've ever been let, let me give What's you let me give... i'm so tired tired of waiting you know? <laughs> yeah i i agree i i've been waiting for this for a long time and the, we've done a lot of, of pushing in the last seven years let me give you an example of a civilization that figured it out immediately and uh and wrecked the whole thing for themselves uh it's straight out of genesis it's the tower of babel but very very short story but i extrapolated on it in a, in a video i made which is you one of the early civilizations not ours <laughs> One of the early civilizations was so great and so technologically advanced and so unified. There was no, you know, divisiveness. You know, we weren't, you know, split up into so many different camps that immediately they said, oh, yeah, so we're in this thing. We're going to get out of here. So they built, you know, it's like if you read it carefully enough, it's like, oh, no, we're going to build a bridge. We're going to build a, a structure that's going to go all the way to the top of this dome. We're going to go straight up. We're going to hit this thing. We're going to, we're going to see what's what. And again, it was a very humbling thing, you know, when you're reading this, because God, if you believe the, the story is straight out of Genesis, God looks and goes, yeah, so <laughs> they're going to probably make it. And we can't have that. So, so it's like, all right, languages, everybody scatter. Let's wreck this thing. <laughs> And, and that's it. And, and that, that, so you don't want a civilization that gets it too quickly. Ours has been slow going very, I think this place has been refined and refined and refined over the, the millennia to where now it takes a long time to discover as long as people don't have UFOs, 
you know, unified field technology, you know, flying cars. Let's use the Jetsons. I love the Jetsons, right? The future we never got, which was flying cars you know, with unlimited range and you can go as high as you want. Basically, little, little UFOs with big glass canopies on them. And if you had those, you could figure things out very quickly. But if you don't, look how long it took us to get to this stage where we are now. I remember 100 years ago, nobody was even flying. Right? There was no commercial air, you know, airlines 100 years ago. It was all very, very rudimentary. Until you had the internal combustion engine, you couldn't figure things. Th well, think about also the, the other stuff even before that. So like the oceans, for example, right? The oceans are only made of 3% salt, right? But 3% salt means you can't drink it, which means all explorations back in the day were limited to how much fresh water you had on board. And if you got out to a certain point, you're like, you're, you're measuring how many barrels you have. It's like, oh, no, there's a point of no return. We got to either turn back now or we're going for broke, right? You could not imagine if you could drink the water you were sailing on. Oh, expiration would be over. People just take off, just go all, I mean, it, it would have cut this thing down by a couple thousand years at least. So I never thought of it like that, but that, uh, well, that was part of my process when I was looking at this thing, which was the more I looked at the model itself, the more I tried to, you know, try to look and it's like, all right, how would, basically, how would I do it? You know, I'm looking at this thing is like being, being very egotistical. It's like, okay, did God know what he was doing. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, that's genius. That's genius too. It's like all of it is absolutely perfect. Antarctica, brilliant, absolutely brilliant in that, you know, uh, first off, forget about what we've done now. The Antarctic Treaty, which we put into place in the late 1950s, 1959 to be exact, which says that no corporation can set up shop in Antarctica forever. It's not even up for review until 2041. It's like, well, 2041 isn't that far away now. It's like, yeah, it's still 20 years away now. But imagine back in the 50s doing that. It's like 80 years later. Why would you? It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, right? Forget so about do that. Do you believe that every single government authority that signed this treaty knows that the earth is flat? Nope. Nope. Why would you? Why would you tell them? You know this better than most, which is need to know works. Need to know is put into place for a reason. Compartmentalization, which is why, why would you tell the the average soldier on the on the front lines what what the the, the grand plan is? Why why don't you tell them? Well, because a lot a number well, of soldiers. What, are, what I'm saying is, do you believe the heads of the governments, the countries, the even heads of the they countries, probably don't have to know? You're like you know you don't have to tell most of them because it's a secret. It's too big a secret. To keep uh, the Ben Franklin line, which I love so much, you can keep it keep it a keep keep a secret between three people if two of them are dead. Pete, we love secrets. We love gossip. There's a come on, we we crave it in so many different ways. So, and is this is the juiciest piece of gossip ever? Which is like, oh yeah, by the way, we're we're not on a globe. We're actually living in a building. People would, people would, would lose their minds. So you, this isn't like the Manhattan Project, you know, where you're finding uranium with thousands of people in different parts of the country for it to make atomic weapons. This right. is the less is more in this case. If it was me, I wouldn't tell anyone. As you tell as few people as possible, even the NASA, like for example, NASA. Let's use them. People say, oh, you know what? All of NASA would have to keep the secret. No, they wouldn't. No, not at all. In fact, 99% of the people that work in NASA know nothing. The only guys, why? Because you don't need to tell them. The only people that need to know other than the very, very high brass would be the telemetry guys. And even the telemetry guys, the telemetry, sorry, um, when an object goes off into the distance, you can't see it anymore. The telemetry guys tell you where it is. It's like, oh, it's 100 miles up and it's 500 miles down this way. It's over the Indian Ocean, blah, blah, blah. That's what telemetry guys do. Even those guys, you couldn't... You wouldn't necessarily have to give them the whole scoop. Just say, look, we need to fake the numbers and here's why. And, you know, if you screw this up. And and by the way, you monitor. And the other thing is, it's like, oh, there's going to be whistleblowers. There's going to be whistleblowers. Really? With the media, you know. I mean, it, what media group would you even trust if you were going to whistleblow now? You got one shot at this. And I guarantee there are producers from alphabet agencies in every media organization ever, not to mention every astronaut, not, not only are they psychologically screened, but come on, you would tap, you would wiretap everything they had just in case they were having a change of heart. And if they had, there was an instant, you know, any red flags at all, these guys are monitored 24 seven. 
And if any of them even thought about going to a journalist, you know, you'd, you'd shut them down. Sorry, I was going off the rails there. No, that's okay because, but then the, in the, the more you're speaking, then it brings other things to mind, like uh, need to know basis. What about these, what about, you see it all the time, live shots from space. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and it's like terrible, that, terrible that, live shots. Lying. Yeah. They're lying. And, 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 um, and the people that, that, that are, that are, um, videoed, you know, or recorded, um, that are supposed to be out there in these, um, in these project space stations. Yeah. They've got to know. They only know that they're lying. You don't have to tell them why they're lying. All you have to tell them is, look, you, you, you are going to fake space. That's all you have to tell them. And we're going to fake it like this. And, and the methods they have used so far have been not horrifyingly bad, but pretty terrible. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's it's really awful stuff the, the way they've been faking it because it's just the, the techniques are are Hollywood B and C C rated stuff. But you don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell them why. And honestly, it's better if you don't tell them why. You saw what happened, like we were talking about earlier. You saw what happened when you t tell the Apollo guys why. I think they knew. I think no different than Capricorn One, the wonderful independent film that was done back in the late seventies, which was when they were faking a Mars mission. They pulled the guys out. They're going, "Look, your rocket's in never going to make it. We'll figure it out later, but we're going to fake this until we get it right." And the astronauts eventually, you know, the, the whole plot premise was they, they had a crisis of conscience. It's like, no, 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 we're going to tell the people. And so, okay, well, we're going to hunt you down. <laughs> and that's what they would do. Why, why wouldn't you? There was this scary moment. It was one of the most underrated moments in cinema where one of the telemetry guys from Capricorn One wrote his own software to, because there was something he didn't like about the telemetry. He wasn't in on it. Right. And you could tell what was going on behind the scenes without any dialogue, which was once this guy went to his supervisor and said, yeah, there's something wrong with the computer. I'm, I'm running my own software and the numbers aren't adding up. This guy was being watched and he was talking with his friend at the bar, friend who was worked for a newspaper. And he just mentioned, he goes, he goes, the transmission couldn't be coming from 70 miles away. The second he said that, a fake phone call shows up at the bar, you know, back in the day when you could call a bar and say, hey, you know, such yeah. a there. And the reporter goes to the bar and he's going, sorry, I can't hear you. It's all, it's all garbled. He'd call me back, right? He hangs up the phone. He turns around. His friend's gone. His drink's still on the pool table. His friend is gone. But even worse than that, he goes to his, house, his, his apartment the next day. There's another lady living in the apartment. And like she's been living there for years. And even the magazine labels lined up, you know, with, and, and she's like, I have no idea. He was erased <laughs> from existence. And that's what you would do. Like I mean, Mandela effect. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, he never was. He never lived. He he wasn't even a guy anymore. Well, and that's what you, you, know, you know. I got into this little. The the British journalist was trying to get me into a fight with one of our astronauts, Terry Verts, one of the American astronauts. And he's saying, "Are you calling Terry a liar?" And I go, "No." I go, "Terry's a full bird colonel." <laughs> I go, you don't get to be a colonel without knowing what to say and what not to say. He plays the game. I go, and you're, you know, and you're running interference for this guy. So don't, don't give me any, you know, these guys know that there's not going to be any whistleblowers. No, most of NASA people, like what the, your guy was saying, uh, you know, you know, how Uncle Joe can work at NASA and build fuel nozzles and not know anything. My neighbor, let me throw out another one for you. My neighbor, when I was living in Boulder, he was waiting for his house to be remodeled and he was living in an apartment next to mine. His name was Wayne Ottinger. He was the garage mechanic for Apollo. The guy. I mean, he was first name basis with all, you know, he helped design the early lunar module that was supposedly landed on the moon. He even wrote a book on it. My next, his, his walls were just bristling with lifetime achievement awards for NASA. He knew nothing. Why would he? Why would you tell that guy? In fact, I didn't even want to tell him. After it's like I couldn't, I couldn't bring it. He was in his eighties. I'm going. I'm, people say, why didn't you give him the business? I was going. Why? I go. Even if I could break through to him, which there's no way I would, because he'd be in denial forever. I go. I'd just ruin him 
it ruined him forever. I mean, he spent his entire life being an engineer at NASA, a hands-on nuts and bolts engineer. I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. But it was nice to know, you know, it reinforced what I already knew, which was that most of the people, you don't need to know. That you only tell them if you have to tell wow. them. So. Are you ever concerned for your safety? Yeah. No, mostly because the, um, the you know, I'll compare it to like Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe, Joe Rogan, uh, he sold out isn't quite the word for it because what they do is they offer you the carrot and the stick at the same time. You know, it's, 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 they give you a choice. That's how it always works. So it's a brief, here's a brief. You think he's a grifter? I do now, but he was, he was honest about it when he, when he did it, which was, he found out during a show, he, he first, back in the day, you know, in the nineties, he hated NASA. He didn't believe it. And all things being equal in a debate, if you know anything about debates, if both sides are basically equally matched, the person with the most conviction usually wins. You know, whoever seems to want it more, right? It's like, no, you're wrong, and here's why, right? And the other person, you know, if they don't have they don't have any emotion behind it, you know, the, it's not going to work. And he was telling NASA people, it's like, no, there's no way we went to the moon. No way. And he absolutely did not believe in the NASA missions. And then... He gets on this show, and I remember him all of a sudden coming to the realization that you can be paid to grift, right? You can, you know, the, the government will hire, you know, hires all sorts of people, actors, comedians, doesn't really matter. They'll, if you say yes to the money, they will hire you. Stanley Kubrick, great example. Look him up if you get a chance, which is, you know, and he went on camera. I remember him saying this. You can find this on YouTube where it's like, if anyone's listening to this right now, I will sell my mother for, for blah, 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 right? And yeah, he was sort of kidding, but he wasn't kidding. You knew full well he wasn't kidding. So what happens? He goes dark for like a year. And then right after that, he comes back. And he's got a brand new show on the sci-fi channel called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And the very first episode, he apologizes for everything he ever said against NASA. And so became his rise to, and then when podcasts, I mean, come on, Joe Rogan's got the number one podcast in the world really it's like based on what talent exactly this is a guy that did the man show this is a guy that did you know that commented for for ultimate fighting i mean yeah he's got a bunch of red team members sure i get that but the number one show in the world it's like no 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 and he brings on astronauts and neil tyson all the time oh i'm sorry so circle back they could get to him because uh, he, had, you know, he got married, he had a family, and I just like there's really not much leverage you can use against me. I never got married, never had kids. So what are you gonna do? It's exactly what are you gonna do to me? Threaten my life? Great, make me a martyr. Fantastic. I've said that for years. In fact, I have a challenge. Let me let me throw a challenge out really quick before you you threw this out there. Mark is ignorance bliss. If you ever wished you never went down, you want me to answer that? Yes. Okay. Um, have you ever wished you never? Yes. In fact, um, the beginning, the beginning of the the book, I the second book I wrote, uh, the opening the opening paragraph was: If you like your life the way it is, if you wake every day up every day and say everything is awesome, right? Start singing the song, and you have no complaints, then don't go down this road. But at the same time, I'm a big believer in objective truths. I'm yeah, it was painful to go through, but once I was done with it, I mean, once I once I got my head around it and figured it out, I was I considered myself better for it. So yeah, the matrix, you know, is ignorance bliss? Always, always it's bliss because you don't know. You don't know any better. So for those people that that but you know, once are, you know how can you go back? Well, you can't yeah, go that, back. yeah, that's just it. You once you get into this. It is very much like the Matrix, extremely like the Matrix, which is, you know, there's a line from that, the, um, we don't free minds after a certain age for a very good reason, which is, it, it's tougher with, even with this, with, with Flat Earth, it's, the older you are, the tougher, it, especially if you're a big fan of the moon missions. If you're, if you're a big fan of the moon missions, you are not going to like this at all because you believe in the media, you know, you believe in the media. The news would never lie to you. In fact, let me throw another thing out at you really quick. Um, when I would do things in other countries, uh, and hopefully I'll get to do it again, we'll see what the mandates do, which is, I, you know, I say, I understand why Americans believe in the moon missions. I get that. 
you know, it's like rah rah, wave the flag, we're the greatest, right? Even though we haven't been back in 50 years, it's like okay. But why do you people in whatever country this is, say Sweden, why do you Sweden people believe in the, the Americans went to the moon? They all answer the same way, which is, well, it was on television. And I go, and it's like, well, it's you're, the news doesn't lie. <laughs> it's like, okay. And I go, I go, yeah, one, it's that's a double whammy. It's like, okay, the news does lie, and the Americans do lie. So the American media doesn't lie. We lie to the world all the time. That's what we do. So no, it's I I part of me wishes I could go back and turn it off, but at the same time, where would I be? No, I, I I've gotten to do I all I did was I said yes to everything. I mean, if if I live long enough to write an autobiography, it'll be called unsolicited. I never had to pick up the phone. People just started contacting me and contacting me and contacting me to where I got to do. I mean, I I was in I did seven conferences in seven countries before the pandemic hit. It was crazy how good we were we were doing and how how fast we were moving. And then you know things kind of got ground down. It was it was unfortunate, but I get it now. Of course, the Great Reset is on hold. Russia's not taking the bait. By the way, that's a whole other story for another time. They're not. They were supposed to be the villain. They were supposed to be the willing villain in this, and they're not doing it. So now nobody knows what to do. I mean, I'm going to go to the conference in, next week. I'm not going to have a care in the world. It's like people say, aren't you worried about a, you know, a big nuke hitting? I'm going, when? When is it going to hit? Right. Yeah, we, we've blown up. Let's see. We've blown up their ships, their factories, the pipeline, a bridge, <laughs> several bridges. It's like there's, they're not going for it. They're, they're too smart for that. They know what's happening. Anyway, sorry. Go on. Mark, you want to talk, you want to talk about the moon? Question. What else you want to talk about? Um, I'm going to give everybody last opportunity for questions because I know that you that you you you're so gracious with your time. Well, and um, you want, let's let's no, talk seriously. About, let's let's talk real quick while while they're coming up with questions. Here's my five big big sticking points for the flat Earth. Okay. You want five five bullet points that I throw at people? Um, Absolutely. One would be long distance photography, which I didn't come up with, which is what's really changed the game is when HD technology came available to the public when in terms of cameras, now a boat, which would be gone over the horizon, you can pull back into frame using HD technology. You can just zoom in. Oh, hey, there's the boat, there's the boat again. Zoom in again. Oh, hey, the, the, that's that same boat. It won't go away. I've seen those. I've yeah. seen those. And normally you think, well, they went... Over the horizon, over the curve. Absolutely. The curve. And but it's they don't. They don't. They don't. In fact, the only reason you can't see them forever is because of the atmosphere we're 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 looking at. Remember what we're talking in here was only 99.9% .9 transparent. At 10 miles it gets thicker, 20 miles it gets thicker. It's the same reason why when if you've ever scuba dived or know people that scuba dive, when you get down about 200 feet, doesn't matter if it's a beautiful summer day, high noon, sun's not getting through the air that we're breathing in is just a thinner version of that. Um, second one would be my favorite, which is the gravity versus um, the vacuum of space question, which is, and I, I don't want to bore people with physics, but they should be able to get this, which is, it's not like the movies. Meaning if you have a vacuum next to you and you open the valve up, the air rushes instantly. It is not like the movies where it's like, get the duct tape. We only have two minutes of air left. No, you're dead in a fraction of a second. Sub guys will tell you this. Underwater pressure guys will tell you this. In fact, if you put a, a valve above your head with a vacuum above it and pop the valve, you probably wouldn't survive. And it's instant, right? So when you go outside, why is our air still here? Exactly. And I've had people, it's, and people, the knee-jerk response, the only response from anyone says, well, it's gravity. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your living room from going upstairs? That gravity? What happens, right. I put the question aside, what happens when our air ends and space begins? The vacuum. Right. It, it is a law of thermodynamics. Pressure cannot exist to non-pressure without a barrier. It's why when you blow a balloon up with your mouth, you let it go a million times out of a million times, it's going to start flying around the room. Number four, right. which would be the, um, no, number three. Number three is the, uh, the eclipse shadow, which is uh, if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, why is the blackout zone only 70 miles wide? 
And people say, oh, it's magnifying, you know, it's it's condensing it down. It's like, really? Because we only say the moon is about 70 miles wide, so doesn't it make sense? Shadows are only same size or longer. They never get smaller. You never walk by a building and your shadow turns into an action figure. Never, ever, ever happens. Ever, ever. Um, fourth one, which was the, the moon temperature, which I mentioned earlier, which is the moon gets cold. You can look it up. There's wonderful stuff. There was even a guy who came out a couple of years ago, shot his entire neighborhood in predator vision. And it was exactly what we said it was going to be, where it's like, oh, yeah, here's warm, here's cold, here's warm, you know, in the middle of the night. And the that last would be a great science project for kids to do for school. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's cheap, cheap to do. You can go down to any hardware store and buy that temperature yeah. gun. Uh, last but not, the moon should, it works better, by the way, if the moon's higher in the sky, uh, you know, and especially like a full moon. Gotcha. Uh, and then last like but not when least, you go out and it's straight up there. Yeah, yeah, that's when it that's when yeah, it's back. Yeah. We've we've measured it up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit difference, which again, it shouldn't be any degree Fahrenheit difference. It shouldn't be at all. It should never be colder. It's like bouncing a flashlight off a off a wall and starting to chill lettuce off the reflection. <laughs> never ever gonna do it. Well, you can now. Well, outside anyway. Uh last but not least is the uh, the Van Allen uh belt question. It's the trap question. No one can, it's kind of like the crane kick and the karate kid thing. It's undefeatable, which is, are the Van Allen belts, the big belts of radiation, supposedly that are around uh, the earth right now, are they deadly? Yes or no? It's a simple question. And if you say yes, they are deadly. Well, then how'd the Americans go six round trips to the moon and back and nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody died, nobody even got cancer. There's still four of these guys limping around today, including Buzz, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah. and all they used for shielding was plastic and some aluminum. Remember, the only things that can stop radiation are lead, which you wear in a dentist's office all the time. Try to go to a dentist's office, by the way, and, and have an x-ray taken without the lead shielding. They'll never let you do it. Uh, gold, which surprisingly enough is twice as dense as lead. I did not know that because how many people pick up a whole bunch of gold and uh, water, which you use for uh, power plants, tons of water, right? Well, none of those things are any good for aerodynamics. You know, you, you don't going to put an anchor on the top of anything, a plane, a rocket, it doesn't make any difference. So, it, so, you, so you're saying, oh, okay, so they're, so, so you, you, you go back and you say, well, okay, they're not deadly. Oh, okay. Then go to the NASA website and look up a wonderful video called Orion Trial by Fire, which they stated that, oh, yeah, we can't test any uh, manned capsules right now because we haven't solved the radiation problem of the Van Allen belts. It's like, what do you mean you haven't solved it? You solved it perfectly, flawlessly. In fact, you never had any problems at all for decades. So what happened? What what changed? And, um, and, and anyway, you, you can't... You, you can't go either way. So those five questions I threw at a um, a physicist from Georgetown, and he folded like a card table. He said, "Sorry, we're not doing the interview," and uh, that, was, that was it. We were done. Because you had his number. Uh, well, I, to be fair, scientists when you reach a certain level, they're very tunnel visioned. They got a small wheelhouse, and anything outside of that. Uh, the reason why flat Earth does as well as they do is because. We we hit them with sh uh, with a shotgun pattern. You might okay, be able to knock I, I down. I got a question for you because Mimi hit one, and and I got it when I was a little girl. Yeah. They put up Sputnik and Echo. Right. And they, if you went out, you could see them. This is what they said. My mom and I, she would go out. We're gonna go look for this, and there, they told us. Whatever that light was, was right. in the sky. Right. Were they satellites? Was it Sputnik? What was it? Are there satellites? Yes, there are. No question. Do they do what they tell you they, they do? For the most part, no. Most of the bandwidth that we're talking here right now, 90-something percent of the bandwidth that's, that's ever out there is done by undersea cables, which started out as undersea phone lines. They were upgraded to fiber optics, and who knows what they are now. But we laid, I mean, it's the simplest option. You just lay thick, thick undersea cables. Cables are easy to make. So that connects most of the, the continents. However, what most people don't know is that NASA is the biggest consumer of helium in the world. Not a secret. 
Why would NASA be consuming so much helium? Because they figured out a way of using balloon, weather balloon type technology and they can keep them up there for a long time, years if needed. And that not only that, but you can they can lift payloads. Yeah, there's some videos on my channel that show it up to about 8,000 pounds right now. That's that's incredible. That's four tons. So if you can lift a satellite, you know, an electronic device up four tons, you know, with, without a rocket, what are you doing with the rockets? Exactly. I think the, the, the satellites that are supposed to go up on rockets, I think they're all scams. I think they build the satellites, they give them to the, the rocket company, rocket company, you know, that works with NASA says, oh yeah, we got that on the rocket right there. They launch the rockets like, yep, there it goes. And the satellite thing is already, you know, already on a balloon. We call them satelloons. It's already on the balloon sitting up there, the program they've been running since the 50s, and they just turn it on. It's like, oh, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> and they charge you huge money because pennies on the dollar. I mean, come on, putting tying an electronic, you know, your cell phone to a balloon. Oh my God, that's cheap. But it works. So that's that's what you see How for the most part. However, helium last, or do they have to redo them? I mean, no, no, no. Helium lasts all as long as the integrity. It's not like like latex. As long as you have uh, the right material, helium can stay a long, long time. Really? Oh yeah. Let be, again, and I guess because you know when you when you go and you get a helium balloon and it and it goes up. And oh, eventually goes, those. Or you have one in the house. Yeah. For for the cats to play with. Right. It eventually. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's see, there's seepage with latex, I but in, in fact, That's your average your average university weather balloon can get up to about 130 thousand feet, and then eventually, you know, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. They're really loose when they come down here because they expand when they get closer to the vacuum. You know, when air gets thinner, the pressure inside the balloon gets more and more and more until it finally detonates and just blows up, and the thing falls the military has figured out a way to keep it at a certain at certain altitudes i don't know exactly what methods they use and in doing so you know stays up there for as long as they want oh yeah by the way by the way let me mention this about the satellites which is there's things that 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 never ever made any sense when it came to satellites so if there are thousands of satellites up there now supposedly Right? right, there's not. I mean, there there might be hundreds, there might be on balloons, but there no, there's no problem with them. If they weren't on balloons, if it was satellites flying around a globe, right? Eventually, did you ever see the movie with Sandra Bullock, Gravity? Ever, I never did. Okay, the whole premise was is that a satellite is that where she's with Clooney. Is yeah, Clo yeah, and Clooney yeah, died never, in the beginning. I just. That's okay. That's okay. You don't have to watch it. I'll give you the bullet points, right? So okay. there was a satellite runs into another satellite, which runs into another satellite, becomes systemic, and then all these satellites start running into each other, and then all of a sudden turns into this big wall of jagged flying metal that eventually runs into the space shuttle, and, and she has to figure out and survive for her life. Okay. The question is, why hasn't that happened yet? If all these satellites have been up there, you're telling me there's never been an accident? to Because remember, if you're in orbit, when one gets hit, it's like a bumper car and it's just going to start spinning around. Well, law of averages, eventually it's going to run into another satellite. It's going to run into this it's going to run into that. You're telling me a micrometeor the size of a nickel has never hit a satellite and started that chain reaction ever. It's, it's just, it's, it's a miracle. It's, it's a bona fide church sanctioned miracle that that's never ever happened. And, but that was the opening premise of gravity and nobody even, I mean, I saw it right away. It's like, Wait a minute. After Sandra Bullock, here's the other the follow up to the Sandra Bullock movie is after she got back like, back home, the entire sky, all the satellites would have been wiped out. You know, because again, it just crash, 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 crash. It'd be, it'd be no different than um, oh well, slightly different. You know, you ever see those accidents on the news where a car you know crashes in fog, but none of the other cars can see it, so they just keep. <laughs> It starts cracking. Absolutely. Imagine that, but with about a thousand satellites. That's all that would happen. It never ever happens. Nobody adjusts for meteor showers. We have meteor showers every year. Nobody talks about it. it's like, hey, shouldn't we move the NBC satellite? Ah, it'll be fine. How do you know it'll be fine? How has it been fine every year? The meteor showers show up. The average person, I don't want to drag this out too much, but there's so much content I can talk about. But think about this. The average person, when they come out of American education. The, or when you come back. Hopefully yeah, when I come, come back. back sometime. When the American, average American, when they get out of the, the education system, knows 
remembers almost nothing about nothing. And they almost specialize. We barely, lucky if we can drive, we get out of high school. I mean, they don't know anything about physics or engineering or chemistry or biochemistry or any of that stuff. And so they leave it up to the lab coats and the lab coats tell us like, oh yeah, we, the, to, to use a line from the Truman show, we believe the world that is presented to us. And if it's on this phone and it looks real, then it probably is real. Now they can't get away with everything, but they get away with a lot of stuff. So the Tesla Roadster in space, nah, it didn't get a lot of traction, but in the Artemis program, by the way, which I think should have never, it, I'm willing to bet that thing blows up in the pad because there's no, Do there was think? no, oh yeah, the Artemis, project, the Artemis project, which you guys don't know, is the new moon missions, right? Yes. We're going back to the moon, 50 years. Yeah. Do know about that. We're, we're going back to the moon. I was they asked. shut it down twice now, or was it three times? Twice, but now it's not even, uh, well, now it's supposedly another two weeks out. But it doesn't really matter because you can't, there's a reason why the first blue marble shot that was taken on the earth, which was taken in 1972, wasn't the second blue marble wasn't taken until 2015 it's because they're scared to death of faking it the longer we go the more people start staring at their screens and start microscoping everything I, if somebody came to me with a dump truck full of money yeah 10 dump trucks full of money and said hey we'd like you to fake the artemis you know the 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 moon project i'd go go you know, find somebody else there's no way i could fake this and get away with it because there, there's too many little details. All it takes is one nerd in his underwear in Nebraska at three in the morning to see something on the screen and be like, hey, that doesn't look right. And then he posts it and then that's it. It's over. It, it game games up. So if they trying to, to say, oh, yeah, we're, I mean, the, remember, the first Artemis mission is just to pass around the moon, which is going to be ridiculous. But then they're supposedly going to follow that up with people, people on the moon. It's like, well, OK. Let, let me let's see how they, I mean, there's a reason why the Russians quit the space race. People don't get that. It's like, oh, we had a space race. Yeah. What happened at the end? Oh, Americans got there. And then what? Well, then the Russians just the quit. The race is over. Yeah. The race is over. The Russians quit because the, stu the two studios realized they would have continuity issues. But one's in Moscow. One's in probably you know, an Air Force base in Nevada. And they're like, yeah, we can, we're never going to get this to match up. Their dirt's going to look different. The, the sky's going to look different. If anything looks different, people are going to pick up on that. And so they said, Russia, just step down off of this thing. We'll take it from here. And uh, you guys can do whatever you want. Just don't go to the moon. And they so did. Maybe and I are on the same page like with these questions because we, when you were talking about asteroids and comets and all these things. Yeah. What shooting stars? What oh yes, well, are there? most of them are, most of them are just lights in the sky. But you know, no different than a planetarium. You can do a shooting star in a planetarium. Looks great. Looks absolutely real. Okay, it came across pretty fast. Can you grab it? You know, is it going to go anywhere? No. Right. Why not? Because it's right. light on the ceiling. However, if you want to put a little more realism into it, you want you know put a little a little more mechanics into this thing. Use a chunk of metal ore. Railgun technology, fire it at a shallow angle, try not to aim at any cities, which I also think is interesting. What I also find just fascinating for me is right now there's what, six billion smartphones in the world, right? More smartphones than, more people have smartphones than um, running water. And yet none of these smartphones have recorded an ass, a meteor hitting anything in real time. So you don't, no, no, I don't. No, uh, no, I. What, about, I, what was hail Bob? Oh, it's just light on, no, it was just light, light on, light on the sky. No different than anything else up there. Now, are there craters down here? Sure, but you can, you can make craters with terraforming between civilizations and be fine. You go out to Arizona, it's like, oh, here, you know, make it no different than the moon craters, which I talked about earlier. It was like, why are they so circular? Why are they so perfect? And how did they hit the moon exactly when our gravity should have sucked them all in? But that's a whole nother thing. So, uh, but seriously, somebody find me a meteor, even the size of a basketball, hitting something on video. I mean, you think, remember, three quarters of the world is water, right? Somebody in fishing, somebody on a cruise boat, something, a meteor, something should be splashing into the water somewhere, just following it from the sky. It takes five seconds to do. It's like, oh, look at that, look at that. Follow it all the way down, never happens. You see something going off into the distance. You see a pop. No one's ever there. Anyway. Excellent. Excellent point. Thank you.
What else okay. can I do for you? Let me see. Okay. Um, Tim says there are new answers. No, why, why would there be? By the way, I will say this, though. I do think there was something coming a couple years ago that came awfully close to that Russian city. And I do believe that they had to take care of it. Somebody had to had to remove that from the uh, from thing because windows were blown out when that when that thing got close. Now, could it have been faked? Sure, why not? But eh, maybe I'm I'm fifty fifty on that one. I don't know what Tim means by old faithful. Will explain our media creators. creators. I don't know. He should send me whatever he's got on that. I want to thank you so much, Mark, for your Happy time, for, for, for your um, wealth of knowledge and for your information and for your research and, um, and for your graciousness to, uh, to be our guest and to, to just be a, a hell of a nice guy. Uh, really. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I pride thank myself on, on not ruffling too many feathers when it comes to interviews because I don't want people to get mad because... Look, I was in your shoes. You know, everybody starts out the same way as I did, which is everyone's like, oh, good, flat earth. Oh, my God. Here we, you don't want to look go. at it. So. Here we go. There are meteorites in museums around the world. Awesome. I mean, cool story. Except that until, you know, there's an old saying on the Internet, which is unless there's video, never happened. So are there meteorites? Sure. Why not? How'd they get there? No idea. I believe those meteorites were probably put there before we were there. It's and we go. were told that they were meteorites. Sure. And in fact, and so, they may be they may be rocks from somewhere, you know, somewhere unidentifiable. But again, find me something again. Six billion smartphones. No one can no one's got anything. Yes, Tim, you can email me, of course. Anybody absolutely. can email me. My email, by the way, my email address is out there for a reason. Um uh, in every video I make, there is my email address, my phone number, my physical address. It's all there. You can just send whatever. I'll tell you, you what want. I'm going to do while you're still on here. I'm yeah. going to um, I'm gonna give it to me. Because um, a lot of times it won't give me the email address. It'll just give me the name. Oh, you could type um, into Google Mark Sargent's email. It'll show up. So really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I like to put it on there. But put in whatever you want. I do not mind. There it is. I'm, I'm just going to put it on here right now while you're here. And um, twenty-three M Sergeant twenty-three, and it's not it's not like military sergeant. No, and that's why it's, it's twenty-three. Because... No A in the sergeant. No, but a lot of military people took that. That's why it's M Sergeant 23. And I, I've had that email for 25 years. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had mine for a while, too. Let's see if this will come up here now. And that was the lowest number I could get. But that's because military sergeants kept grabbing them. There it is. Is that right? It is. Did I type it right? Okay, yep. everybody, you just go ahead and, and if, you, if you'd like to email Mark, he says, do it. And trust me, I'm just a, a little, a, a little small, little YouTube channel, not monetized. I'm just trying to get truth out to people and share truth and, and um, expose, reveal great awakening this was one of the biggest lies that we've been told along with 9 11 the titanic dig on jfk and uh the pandemic sure. and and the jib jab and all this other stuff I, and and um trust me when i say the the reason he's on this show is because i just simply emailed him and i've emailed plenty of of people that I mean, Mark's got a hundred and some thousand subscribers on his YouTube. He didn't have to talk to me. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't have to answer that email. But I promise you, he. I got an email back from him. I I, I want to say within four hours and said, "Sure, I'd love to come on your show." And I I almost fell out. <laughs> so um so thank you. Oh no, and, I'm um, happy to do it. Thank you. 
And Seriously, and I, I will find you. I will find you some other people to talk to if you, if you want. I do. Okay. I would love to. Okay. You know, because um, I'm trying to bring information, but if nobody wants, you know, because I don't know it. Sure. And I'm learning too with everybody else, but it's, um, I'm, I'm on a mission here. I mean, this is part of my sole purpose is to help awaken people on this flat earth Sure. and, sure, sure. and do what we do. So uh, let me just check here. If there's any, I spent, wait a minute, where'd she go? I spent a month in Antarctica with my, Ant Antarctica. Antarctica. Where did we go? I don't. I don't know. Where oh no, no, we... you're 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 on the ice, no question. But were you on a continent, a frozen continent, about the size of Australia? No. Nope. You were on much a much much bigger bigger place, way bigger. So. Okay. There's that. I'm kind of curious, by the way, whoever that person was, uh, to what capacity they were doing, because most people down there are military or military contract scientists. So. Yeah, because you're not, dude. But, uh, and everybody says, uh, all the comments were, thank you so much. And, um, and that it was a great show and you're a great guy. And I have uh, to agree. How can we find Mark's channel? It's really easy, easy. Easy. Just go into any search engine, type in Flat Earth Mark. You'll find me. That's the easiest way. But uh, I, I, let me see here. But you can put in the link if you wish. I'm going to. Um, I'm. Let's see. Here he is, and actually, I had it up on here. It's now. I love it because you know my nickname is KK, and yeah. you've got Mark Sergeant here with two Ks. It's M A R K K, Sergeant. That is absolutely crazy to me. It, That's the it's, name of your YouTube channel. It's synchronicity because my middle name is Kendall. Okay, Mark K. Sergeant. That's yep. crazy. Yeah. But uh, and I'm going to type that in just so you can check out his YouTube channel. And uh, I've, I subscribed immediately. Well, thank you. Um, Appreciate it. Where is it? That's his channel, dear. Except for the... Mark uh, K. Sergeant. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. It's all right. Uh, I missed the end. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Lots of people smell it, spell it wrong. Yeah, but I want them to get, I want them to get there. All right. So. All right. Again, you could type in Flat Earth Mark into... I, in fact, when I search on YouTube, I just type in Flat Earth Mark. Just because it comes up quicker. No. Nope. I'll be daggum. I'm hitting the wrong one here. <laughs> there it is. Okay. There we go. There we go. There That's it my is. Deal. Mark K. Sergeant. And yeah. it's right on YouTube. And he's got he's got incredible, incredible uh content on there. And it's 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 very enlightening. So thank you again, Mark. Um I hope I hope you come back sometime. I will. We'll have, I will. We'll have some you know more, when, and I will we'll make some time. more questions. I know you're a busy guy, and you've got the um, Flattoberfest coming up. Tell us your dates about Flattoberfest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so a, um, a week from Friday. Wow, tomorrow. A week from tomorrow uh, in North Carolina is the big U.S. conference. It's called Flattoberfest. And uh, tickets are available. If you're on the East Coast, you could probably drive down there pretty easy. Most people drive. They don't fly. And right. it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's two days, two days worth of conference. The Friday, we do a, a free event where we're just taking over a park and, you know, music and barbecue and stuff. But Saturday and Sunday, a lot of speakers. I'm opening the conference. And I wasn't there last year because I was a little worried about the whole pandemic flying thing. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lot lot of information, and but more than that, it is a chance. If if any people are out there that are into flat Earth, and you think, oh, there's nobody around me is, is into flat Earth, I highly recommend it. Um, oh, well, let me plug one more thing real quick, fast. Not just Flat Toberfest, but if you're concerned about where flat Earthers are, we've got a fantastic um, app out there called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, and in it is there's something called a Flat Earth Friend Finder 
where you know you sign you know sign in and if you and you get a little blue dot wherever you are in the map there are so many blue dots everywhere it's awesome i mean thousands and thousands and thousands of people and those are just the people that sign up for the app the we are we are an extremely fast growing group mostly because our retention rate's so high and uh, i don't regret a single second of it well, Mark, thank you so much. You yeah. just uh, a wealth of information and and comical and entertaining as well. <laughs> uh, but uh, but the uh, but the knowledge and the explanations and um, the references and uh, you know, well, this is this is where I've looked and this is why. And I just th I just can't thank you enough. I I am thrilled that you asked me on, and thank you, thank you, and uh, until next time. All righty. God bless you. And we'll see you soon. And um, I'll email you and you can and get me some more some more flat earthers on here. I will. I will. All right. I'll hook you up. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and and Mark, that was um, it was incredible. It, it was very enlightening to me. Um, 2020 put millions of eyes on other things. Thank God. That's right. So, um, glad so there, there are many flat earth friends and the flat earth clock, which I just have a hard time using the clock. I want to use the clock, but it, I still haven't figured it out, Tim. So, but that's, that's my next thing. But, uh, God bless you all. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for everything. It, for all your prayers and we'll just go out with this.